It's amazing. I always use the, the, the crowd against me. I used to turn it into a positive. As a motivator. Thinking, well, I'll beat him, but I'm going to beat all you guys at the same time. And as soon as you beat the, as soon as you beat their fighter, they all shut up. It's, 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 it was a mental thing. So you just got to turn it in the right direction. Instead of being, oh, all these guys are shouting, you nervous. And, well, what can they do anyway? They can't do anything. But you say, oh, come on, big man, I'll just keep shouting because I'm going to keep you all quiet soon. You just turn around the right way. Say, well, I love to travel. Um, Obviously, Jeff being a great uh, hero in, 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 in Australia, it, it was um, a big challenge. Even my promoter, I remember he coming up to say, guys, you chose the fight. If it goes sour, you don't have to blame yourselves. But again, I, I just I trained too hard. I, I, I always put the effort in there, and I was like, I'd go to fight him. I just can't lose this fight. I've done too much work to, to get you. Do you recall anything about the, the build-up to the fight and meeting him in press conferences? Because he he was also a very confident guy. Of course, he was, it was late in his career. It was high in weight for him, but he was always a guy that liked to um, kind of use the mental he edge was, as well. I remember very clearly, um, he was very confident. Um, in fact, it was almost a, I say a bullying type of style, trying to make you nervous. But even... Like little things, um, when, whenever we go to places or do things, it was always Jeff and I remember even my trainer one stage, you guys, Philip the champion, you should introduce him first, he should go up first instead of Jeff, and it was always Jeff, Jeff, Jeff this and Jeff that, so I, I think it's sort of, I can say, bullying tactics, I don't know, no. but then, no, I just, I've done too, done too much work, I've done too much work, I, guys, I mean, you get people that definitely get affected by that. But I wasn't that person. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what you said, doesn't matter what you done. They don't want me. They don't want me. And and the end of the fight came in kind of an atypical way for you, a, a very quick and, and and devastating second round knockout. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit. Well, I, I expected a tough fight. I mean, I, I obviously I knew Jeff. I'd seen some of his, his stuff before. He was real tough, a big worker also. So he would have um, liked us a big work rate. Right? Um, but like I said, I trained real hard for the fight. And I tried to tell him, tells me what an easy fight was. Easy fight. I said, yeah, it was an easy fight. But if you look at the package, I always look at the fight as a package. So your training is part of the package. If your training is not hard, well, then the fight becomes hard. So that's how I look at it. So fight was real, the training was real hard, which allowed me to have easy fight. But it's, it's not easy. I mean, it's still... I mean, I'll give you a good example. Fight Jeff, stop me round two. It wasn't a real physical fight because it was only two rounds. But the next morning, are you mentally drained? Are you tired? Are you a bit sore? Yes. Because it's the whole package, the nerves, the tension, leading up to the fight. So after the fight, you still, it's a relief. Your body's a bit stiff and sore. I mean, obviously, I fought out of say, for example. So that was a real tough fight. That was, I was exhausted. But... Even though it's an easy fight, you you still drain, you still tired, you still it, it drains you. It's, it's, it's a mental game. Yeah. So after the Fennec fight, you 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 plowed through three more defenses, and then was uh, a big fight coming to the states, which you know a lot of uh, overseas fighters uh, talk about wanting to fight in the states. It's a bigger scene, bigger platform, and uh, and you fought. Not De La Hoya, but the Olympic alternate, Shane Mosley. Um, talk about that fight a little bit. You know, um, you know your thoughts going into it, the, the chance, what it meant to you, and, and then, of course, how the fight went and how you felt about the decision. To be honest, I didn't know much about Shane Mosley. Um, I, yeah, I, didn't, I, I didn't really know much about him, to be honest. I think if I knew, if I had looked up the research, I may wouldn't have taken that fight straight away, and I'll tell you why. It's because um, Pete Telefrida was the fight before that was, and uh, I actually just got married. And um, I was supposed to fight Pete Telefrida, and then I was going to get married the week afterwards, and then go into a honeymoon. Then what happened, something happened, the fight was postponed. I ended up getting married, going to honeymoon, coming back from honeymoon, fighting three or four weeks later. So it was really a mess up. I didn't have a very good fight against Pete Alfredo. I won the fight, but it was, I got dropped, dropped him. It was a real tough fight. I think 
Meekly. If I had another fight and had my more preparations and had a good win, I maybe would have gone into Mosley fights better prepared. But I mean, it's what it's like. I didn't know Mosley much. Tough fight, obviously. Great boxer. I mean, if you're going to lose to somebody, let's lose to a superstar like Mosley. Because I mean, you look at his career; he's done fantastic. But um, a bit disappointed about the fight. I felt. Uh, I just told you earlier, I haven't actually never, I never watched that fight. It's, it's, it's too. <laughs> so I haven't really watched the fight. Um, do I think I won the fight? I think so. I think so. I put all the pressure on him, I was attacking him all the time, I was throwing heaps of punches. I know Mosey came out real fast in the first couple of rounds. Uh, he's obviously he took the first couple of rounds. And then I felt he got real tired. Uh, didn't throw a lot of punches. I was doing the pressure all the time. I know he was blocking some, but I just felt that a real big work rate in the, the late rounds. I even picked up the work rate. I was just all over him in the last couple rounds. So if I initially look back now and think about it, yes, I think I might have won that fight. But obviously, I didn't get the decision. One judge thought you won. No, one judge won. He's my friend. And it, and it was close. It was so, close. so that was good. I mean, obviously... Um, just being able to say I, I went the distance with Mosley. I mean, he, he'd stopped everybody prior to that. But the hard part for me was I, I put up a good show. Like I said, it was a split decision. I just felt I deserved a dream match. And uh, I think this sort of got chucked out into the street. It didn't that. happen. But then you, did you make a conscious decision to leave the lightweight uh, class and, and move up? Because then you were... Not really. Um, I actually, like I say, nothing happened after the fight. Um, I just, and then I was going to the gym and there was never talk of fights. So my training became real on and off. I think I put a bit of weight on and then I took a stage where I just took, I think, six months off. I did nothing. A lot to do with obviously losing and I'm even say being depressed. And then obviously got back in a couple of fights, didn't earn real good money and it was just trying to get something going and nothing seemed to really happen and then moved to Australia again and again money was even worse there than South Africa I just went to the, just walk away walk away so you, you mentioned uh, Australia again so at, at what point uh, first of all when did you make the decision to move there did you get some thoughts about it when you went down to fight Jeff and oh, I did. looking around and... we did our food Jeff and we like I said we had a great time people were very friendly to us uh, and I went there for, uh, for uh, I was six weeks before the fight to a training camp, so I got to see quite a bit. Uh, that stage was my fiance, who's now my wife, came over with my mother, and then we stayed another month, six weeks after the fight. So I got to like, see a lot. People very friendly, really liked the place. Not actually thinking we're going to live there, just went back to South Africa, and then obviously knowing about South African violence and crime. Uh, and then the family always said, well, why are you going to move to the States? And I said, well, I like the States, but I felt Australia was a better country to bring my kids up. A more family oriented. I felt. Just, anyway, so Australia, so it was the place we decided to come to. Um, no regrets, very, very happy. Um, living in Australia, my kids love it. And we live in a beautiful place, Brisbane. This convention, Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. So you moved to Australia while you were still an active fighter before you retired? I had to be. Yeah. I had to be. Because I came over on a sports visa and I applied for my residency to be uh, to live in Australia. And I had to be an active fighter. I didn't actually know that. I thought when I came over, I was actually coming over just on a visa. As in, as in to apply to live. But the guy that did my agency stuff for me, he said, no, no, it was actually a sports visa. I said, well, I didn't end up paying double fees because once I got my sports visa that was only for a certain time and when that expired I then I had to apply for residency in a big way but yeah I came over and um, really loved the place and uh, came over and I had to be an active fighter so I took I think three fights when my once I, my visa was actually gone to stay then I I quit yeah so you had the end of your career inside the ring in sight for for a bit, and uh, so talk about the the mental.
mental process of deciding my career in boxing inside the ring is going to be coming to an end because it was 19 years in the ring as a pro, yeah. not counting your amateur, yeah. and that's um, that's a long time. Tough, tough, tough. Um, we actually spoke about it the other day. I talked with a couple of the, the refs and judges then and said the hardest thing about a fight is knowing when to stop because you, you, you watch all these fighters and they just go on and on. And I think they diminish the actual records they have and it sort of puts a bit of a sour spot on you. Anyway. So, it came with the thing, I, I must be honest, um, a big factor was money. Money was a big factor. Australia, money was really, really, really bad. And I just thought, I'm not, I'm not doing all this work for nothing. And then, um, I suppose... The purses, when you say money, they, they, yeah, the, the purse, the purse, purse wasn't, they weren't shocking, good. Boxes. Absolutely disgraceful. Uh, I mean, if I was, even today, if I was fighting, if I, had, if I was at a stage in my career thinking to fight, I wouldn't do it. Not what they earn. Not what they earn. It's absolutely a joke, a joke. Anyway, so that was one of the factors. I mean, I was getting on in age. I um, the, the difficult part for me is I I felt real good. Like I told you earlier, I've had no real struggles with, with, with injuries and aches and pains. I mean, even today I'm feeling healthy. And so it was almost like I retired. On their terms, yeah. not on my terms. I just felt I had more in me, and I don't know. I just, I suppose, always felt another world title shot would have been good, but it never happened. So I, I went through some real difficult times, and then I wasn't sure what I could do. I tried different, different, just different jobs. Yeah, there, everywhere. Just difficult time in my life. I'm sure it's very really difficult time in my life, and um, and then um, the course of the way boxing ended, I just retired. Uh, uh, not a good feeling. Like I retired because I think the money wasn't good. I, I didn't get a shot in a rematch in the world title. I didn't want anything with boxing. I just don't want to look at boxing. Don't want to talk about boxing. I don't want to be involved in boxing. And uh, must, that must have been about two years, I reckon. I'm just floating around, trying different things, what I'm going to do. And then over that time, I sort of got my passion back boxing and I up a gym. Yeah. So that was the next... Outside of the passion, did it seem like, well, it's a logical choice. This is what I've done for more than 20 years of my life, so it seems like it's, it's what I know. Definitely. It's something I can do. Definitely. I, I think a big part of me is I'm, uh, obviously it's, it's in our blood. It's, it's who we are. Like, I mean, it was a short two years, short time to, to be sort of away from the thing, but I found um, I had a lot to offer. I felt like I had a lot to offer because I'd, I'd been there and, you know, I mean, you get world champions out there, there wasn't many in Australia and um, you got all these gyms and guys teaching boxing and you see some of these guys boxing, it's like, where did you learn your skills from? It's really, it wasn't great. And I felt being where I was, also the mental side, telling guys, you know, like, how do you tell somebody going to all time to fight, relax, don't be nervous, He's never been there. How does he? How does he overcome those things? Where well, I think I've been there. I, I, I knew what to say to the fighters. Anyway, so it was time to get back in. Got back in the gym and started with a couple of fighters. Um, only amateur fighters, and I had a couple of pros. And again, like I told you, money is just pathetic in Australia. So these guys got to work all day, then come to the gym night time, and none of them could really. Put the, effort. put the effort into it and just from my background of like being such a hard worker it was always fighting with these guys and it's like come on guys you aren't doing the work and I suppose I could be a bit more understanding that these guys work all day but I mean it's I've always had a theory if you're not going to do something properly well, don't do it just give 100% or just go somewhere else and I mean I understand in working they've got to pay bills but when you were in the gym give me 100% and I'm telling you to do something, do it, don't, oh, I'm too tired today, and I'll do it tomorrow. So that was a frustrating part as well, I and mean, then um, it turned out the gym's gone more in the direction of just the general public, but I mean, I still enjoy, I still enjoy, uh, I still enjoy teaching them, because I mean, you get, um, I've, had, I've had letters from people coming to me saying to me that they hate boxing. Couldn't stand boxing. The only reason why they've done boxing is because they know it's a really good workout for you. And then 